Hello, everyone. We are on our writer's meeting with Rav Dr. Michael Lightman and with our reporters, content people in all languages, and we would like to ask Rav Lightman questions on different topics in order to be able to take all of this content to explain the beauty and glory of the wisdom of Kabbalah. Recently, we've been talking a lot about Corona and what it brought into our life. And as a result, many people started writing different questions and responses. And our first part today, we would like to introduce uh, what people, the comments that people sent, questions. So let's start with the first question. David Gabay. With all my, I really want to believe that the world will go to a better place, but it's hard to, th- to believe that people will break their old habits. I'm not a prophet. I really hope that what we are going through, it always leaves an impression. Every action leaves an impression, especially such an action that comes from above and lands on everyone. Everyone. And therefore, I think that the change will be vast. First of all, it seems that it's not going to end that quickly. Like some people might think, that preferably that it will end quickly and we'll go back to the same life that we had before. We can succeed and earn and pollute the air and the planet and the water and everything. And again, we'll begin the competition and all of these endless events. I think that finally we have to go into different kind of events because we are approaching the end of correction. I believe what it says in the wisdom of Kabbalah. I feel it a bit on myself. And therefore, I can't say what measures will there be, to what measure will these changes happen? Of course, this this era will pass and there will come a new era, but undoubtedly it will make a big change not only in people's behavior, but also in their internality. And we'll see a new world. We will be new as well, and this is why we will see a new world. Lital is asking, I'd be happy to understand, your words hold lots of confidence and understanding that there is an that there is a real change happening here. Where do you get your confidence from? No, my confidence is my own confidence, and everyone has to investigate things and research things for themselves and acquire the measure of confidence. Not that exists in me, but in those things that happen from above, according to the purpose of creation, according to what comes to us from the upper force. I'm not recommending you to use my confidence. Would you like to add? No, nothing to add. What I'm saying, I'm simply telling you that there's a certain line of thinking here, a line of scrutiny, something to research, and You can follow it, research it, maybe you'll feel something above the ordinary. I want to awaken this line of thinking in you. There are many skeptic responses. I wish you're right, but mutual responsibility, being satisfied with what you have. What would you tell them? Undoubtedly, I agree with them that it is impossible that out of the people that we have today 
on earth will come the last generation, the generation of the Messiah, on the one hand. On the other hand, just like we did not think about the day that the virus will come, that such a thing can come and will stop everything. Imagine, everything stopped. You can walk around Manhattan and Tel Aviv and everywhere, and if not for the police, then practically, you know, everything's open. Like in, like in the woods, what happened with all of these big cities in China and other places? I saw videos from Paris, from Moscow. Everything's empty. Did someone think that this is possible? It's like in a Hollywood movie. That some calamity comes from heaven or something. So, let's think that it's possible that such a thing is happening. That because we are in quarantine, because we stopped treating each other poorly, and it doesn't matter that nature did this. It's always nature that does it, not us. The evil inclination is nature too. But that nature is putting such brakes on our evil inclination and against our will, meaning against the force of nature, we are relating to the new conditions that nature is setting for us. Then it's possible, everything's possible. If nature is drawn to balance, and I'm talking in a simple, healthy manner, if nature is drawn to balance, then let's see ourselves that possibly we're in balance. That's it. For me, it's easy to think that. I saw many changes. And I've never dreamt about such a change like Corona. I thought that it would come in some other form. But you see what's happening. Now the only question is, how by this quarantine, by this blow, will we start going through some interchange? This is the matter. First to think, to decide that we need a different world, a different planet, cleaner, better, nicer. And the main thing is that our relationships will be clean. I don't feel that today I want to succeed, gain, where's the competition, this, that. As if the corona already cleaned us to some extent, that we're sitting at home and we agree to sitting at home. I can say, yeah, I'm worried what's going to happen with my business, this, that. But on the other hand, I feel that people aren't really anxious about what's going to happen to their millions. There's like this kind of cloud that's descending on people saying, don't worry, it's not that bad. Everything will somehow fall into place. People are becoming kind of more held back. It's like this, there's this force from above that also doesn't give them the ability to move, to do what someone thought that this is possible. So what, that the government forbid me from continuing doing my business or whatever, I do it somehow. But no, I see everyone yields, meaning there is some kind of a very interesting action here that we're going through. I really hope that we will see results. What's this cloud that's working on us, this action? Desire? We're operated by desire. 
A special desire came now from above that enters each and every one of us awakening a special desire in us that we can agree to sitting at home, not going to work yet. You know how hard it is with your wife and children. Things that no one was, no one thought that he could stand that. People even go on vacation, so they go to some place to be among others, to see each other a bit less, to be together, but it's not called together, you know. You're walking around with a group, with tour guides, you go here, go there. Somehow everything's moving. You're, you're engaged in something. Here, there's nothing to be engaged in. Four walls, one face. That's it. So there's a problem. Our nature isn't really changing. It's true that we're starting to open our eyes a bit, but it turns out that there's also the ugly Israeli that's being more and more revealed, that I go to the supermarket and buy food at the expense of others that don't have. I take twice as much as I need, and so on and so forth. The ugly Israeli continues only in different forms. Let's exploit everything as much as we can. So, what do you want me to tell you? He'll learn, eventually he'll learn on himself that all of these things come with a final result. We'll feel the difference at the cash register. He'll feel it. Okay, what can we learn now? What can we do right now? Nothing to do. We have to learn about our evil inclination, and this is exactly how we learn about it. That a person as always wants to earn at the expense of others, and he doesn't have that much. It doesn't really bother him that, that that much that he's taking at the expense of others, even at the expense of the elderly, of these, those. But but people will learn from this. Don't worry, we'll see it. Now, very intensive times will come, times where we will learn as a group, as a mankind, we'll learn how nature or God, God in Gimatria's nature, teaches us how we have to change. Meaning the Creator he created something bad, and now, by the reforming light called the Torah, he's showing us what he did. Just see what he's doing. He is showing us how he did corrupted work. And what then, in order to show us the difference between this form and that form. So first of all, he has to show us the ugly form and then the corrected form. Ugly, corrected, ugly, corrected, on and off, until we will really learn as a result that we will deeply feel that we do not want this corrupted form. We're willing to see it to reveal it, but only in order for it to improve and disappear from the face of the world. How to impose a curfew on our ugly ego too? Only by helping each other. There's no other way to do it. I have no chance of overcoming my ego. Only by helping each other that I help you and you help me. Rob, previously I heard you say that hmm, the generation that's can't be the, this generation can't be the last generation. 
Who said that? Don't say I said that. So, say, as if I heard, seemingly I've heard. Right. I heard that the people that are living in the world now can't be the generation of the Messiah. Our generation cannot be the generation of the Messiah because it is not evil enough. So, then I hope that the evil will be revealed in its complete form and and then will it be worthy to invert itself into the generation of the Messiah that it will invert? What can be worse than what we are now? If it can't be, then we're ready then. It says that the face of the generation is like the face of a dog. It says about the last generation and many other sayings that no one hears anyone else, no one takes others into account, disregards everyone. People are even proud about how bad they are. Dudi, find these things later on and we'll read about what does it mean, what does the last generation mean. The terrible things that you have there, the men, the women, the, the theft, the lust, control, the desire to use, to exploit everything. That's the revelation of evil. It's not that people are good or bad, but this is how their evil is revealed. The Creator has to reveal all the evil that He has created. You understand that it's something that's undescribable, unimaginable. It's not that we're worse than animals. There's something that we've passed a long time ago. And only after the revelation of evil that we don't want to stand it, not because it's bad for us, but we acknowledge the evil of it, of these actions, of the evil itself, meaning that I can't agree with it. It's not that I feel bad as a result, but that the essence of the evil itself is something that I can't stand. Then, then, we cry out to the Creator, and He corrects it. Meaning, this generation that will be that bad, it won't just be bad, it'll be bad, and they will already have some kind of inner preparation that it's not their evil, but an evil that comes from nature that they have to correct. So, don't think that this will make it easier, that it's not from me, but from the Creator. When you're saying that it's from nature or something, that it's general for everyone, so a sorrow shared as a sorrow halved. No, I suffer for everyone. I suffer that things are that bad and that this evil is my evil. Because in these states of the last generation, we're reaching a state where all of us are coming close to one another and our evil is becoming ever more revealed, that it is becoming more global, that it is becoming clearer to me that it is an evil that comes to the entire world through me, because all of us together are coming to connect into one connection. And so what follows is that I am the one that brings the evil to the entire planet, to all the souls together, to Adam Rishon. And then I can't stand that. Meaning I'm willing to take all of these things upon myself, only that it won't come to humanity. This is what I come to, that they're suffering because of me. And then I ask of the Creator, 
Help. This is the only thing that I want. That I can remain in all the problems and troubles, only not them. Them who? Everyone. I don't want to be the one that causes them this harm. Then comes the force that pulls me to a state of the revelation of good. The gap, the difference between the revelation of good and bad, this is called Eliyahu Navi. Another question, who to blame for the coronavirus? No one to blame. I don't understand. Who is there to blame? From the beginning to the end of creation, there is no one who is at fault, but everything comes from the Creator. Everything is none else besides Him, and we're to blame just for one thing, that in this time that we have, we are incapable of revealing the reason, and that we're walking in the path of in due time and not in hastening. Am I to blame the Creator, our relations, what, His nature? That the evil is revealed, no one's to blame, but it is the evil that the Creator has created that is being revealed. That the evil is being revealed as evil, this is already that we're to blame for, because in such a state, we can prepare ourselves in such a way that in advance, we know that the evil can be revealed on such a level, and in advance, we prepare ourselves to receive it in its correct form in mercy, in a good and nice relationship that is related to the goal. And then the darkness that is revealed, it is a darkness that is related to the light that comes due to that darkness that comes after it. And therefore, the darkness shall shine as light. The process of recognition of evil sounds like a lengthy and hard one. How to hasten it in order to reach correction? Well, this is clear to us. Clear to uh, It's clear how to do it through our work, by connecting in a group, by taking different actions in that direction. It says about this in our different articles. It's written about it. But this is our work right now. This is the state that we're in. You have to understand. There's no problem. We're going through everything now. These are the states of the end of correction. We can do it in a very short period of time and finish with it, or we can smear it over years and years. Okay, so what, what can we add? What we can add is to increase our awareness, our awareness and of everyone else that we can on this planet. Awareness in relation to what? In relation to what we're going through to accept these things correctly, that there's none else besides Him, the good that does good, who's bringing us all of these states in order for us to accept them gladly, that it is the Creator that does it all that there is none else besides him, that he's advancing us toward new special states, the end of correction. Eliyahu, what do you mean? These are things that maybe we have to renew a bit. These kinds of writing articles. Another question. After any plague in in history, and right after it came um, renaissance and culture, in economy, in many things. What do you see after the corona? Can you picture some? good, positive, future state, not the end of correction. I think that this is what's going to happen, that people will not want to go back to this crazy life in which 
we're simply putting in 90% of our efforts in order to make our life worse that we are helping each other to stop each other to not allow all of these forces in the world to break out once again in our egoistic engagements in order not to not only in order to not corrupt the planet and we were already in such states that we thought that soon third world war soon we'll die what do we care subconsciously we already agreed with everything that can happen that why bring children into this world and so on no now we're getting a new mind and heart that there is what to live for in order to really make a leap from here to the next degree there's a feeling that there's like a tornado that everyone's waiting to go out after the storm and correct the damage what do we have to correct the day after the storm what should be our first priority I don't know uh, our first priority, what people want, I go back to my coffee shop on Dizengov Street in Tel Aviv, sit on my chair, eat a few my cakes, uh, drink a few more cups of coffee. This is what a person's used to. And someone else, he goes to his barber and other things. And again, you see thieves on the streets um, and what not this is the kind of life that you want to go to back to um, no but what's what's bigger more social what that uh, our flight company will once again start flying every place and will take millions of Israelis to different countries for them to spend billions of dollars and that this is the only thing that they'll think about that a person barely landed he's already thinking about where we're gonna fly next time the, the airplane is landing everyone's starting to ask where were you where did you go where do you think um, where do you think to go only that where are we going to throw ourselves in order to forget about everything that's going on in our ordinary life you went abroad many times what's bad about that to go abroad or uh, sit and drip, drink a cup of coffee in my favorite coffee shop why not can be a part of our life it all depends on your intention all depends on your intention I'm not saying that I do fly and a lot but it is always for the sake of something I really love nature and then when I go I really want to also see mountains and valleys and you know nature never people never but I don't think that after the corona we will be able to go back to that I think that people will be much calmer They're, they will be more settled down they will want to be more connected with one another to talk to each other meaning the disconnection that exists between them now will give them a bit of a drive to settle settle down Jewish communities in the diaspora are kind are having a hard time our communities are used to be stronger also the Jewish uh, I can't hear you Dudi. 
You said something about the coronavirus. How, to what extent will the coronavirus influence Jewish communities around the world, um, make them do aliyah? In the meantime, I don't think that we went even through half of the coronavirus. Uh, people start talking about it. It's uh, business owners and governments. Governments are afraid that they won't have money. Businesses are afraid that if we can go back to something and they're not going back to it, then they're really losing. I mean, these are different interests. Also, the ordinary people that sit at home, everyone. Everyone more or less wants to get out of this situation, but it won't help. This blow has a process of its own, and I do not think that it's passing already. I think that until the summer's over, September, October, something around that, and we'll see, there, there will be waves, and also this is in relation to the virus itself, and if not in relation to the virus, then, how to say, that still, it's in terms of the education that the virus has to give us. We have not achieved anything yet, and this is an extended process that a person's getting used to sit and not work, and he's fed up with television, and check how many people are talking on the phone now, like before or less, how much are they watching television all the time or less, you'll see that somehow everything's falling asleep. How's that possible? A person has so much time. What are they doing at home all this time? Meaning people are going into a kind of slumber. And it's interesting the way that it works. There is some kind of thought, upper thought, that the entire world's going through, and it's putting us into a kind of sleep. Calm down, think differently, exchange your thoughts, your desires, start thinking differently, maybe one way or another. Meaning, there is work here that every moment, every second, the upper force is influencing us. Let it work. Let it work. I feel it, that it is working. And therefore, I'm not setting any time here. Where, when is it going to happen? How is it going to happen? This is completely not our business, but I hope that we will start seeing ourselves that we have received some kind of change and that we don't feel like going back to the previous situation and we don't want to fill the planes and do and go and this and that, but just like we are with the corona, we can practically be without the corona. Really? Why not? I'm going to work, I work a few hours and it's enough, and then I go and buy what I need, and go home, and take the children um, to the woods to play something, to nature, why not? Why do I have to make money and spend it? Make it and spend it. We will come out different, I promise you. Wait. Therefore, these things of what's going to happen the next day, it hasn't come yet. We can't see it yet. We're broadcasted live now, and there are people that resist the answer that you previously gave. Many people write, what's the problem about flying, go, going to uh, go, 
Taking a walk in nature, drink a coffee in my favorite coffee shop, what we should rot at home. It's like it said, let's eat and drink, for tomorrow we die. We need to increase our awareness in relation to what are we living for? What's the meaning of life? Just add that. Do whatever you want. But still, you have to be aware. I am doing it for the sake of that, for this purpose. And not to look at others and do what they do. They're flying, we're flying. They're going, we're going. They're this, we're that. By this, you erase the human level in a person, his individualism. There's nothing about it. This way we can't reach any purpose. People will understand this, and it takes time. But what we're going through now is an educational phase where the upper force is educating us. Let it do it. To jump now and talk about what's going to happen in the future from the previous states, that's not... It's not wise to do. Let's live and see. A question about Passover. Um, it's a family holiday, and it's becoming a holiday of isolation. Wait a second. Why is it not a family, a family holiday? True, it's not with your grandparents, with your aunts and uncles, but with my nuclear family. It's very nice. I see friends of ours on the screen, and each of them has a family. Each of them has a husband or a wife and children, and they live at home. And probably they all have what to eat. And this evening, they're going to go over the signs, the symbols of the exodus from Egypt. And this is how it's going to be so that they will feel a bit more what is going on, that they will feel the bitterness that they have now in life because they're not outside of Egypt. Yeah, but the grandparents have more content from sitting with their grandchildren, children. So precisely because we have to come out of the true Egypt, we have such signs like not being able to be together. We want to be together above the corporeal limitations, and this way we will reach the true Passover. So how to turn it into a true holiday of freedom? It all depends on our internality. If now we will simply want to really be together as the people of Israel that want to reach Yashar Kel to achieve adhesion with the Creator and connection between us in order to discover the upper force of nature, then let's do it. And there's nothing that's standing in our way or preventing us from doing it. Not at all. Even today, we can really come out of our real Egypt and to really celebrate the exodus from slavery to freedom. Again, how can we feel together even though that we're separate? If we'll want to connect, if we'll want to connect, at heart, then we won't feel that we're in different places. Truly so, no problem. I promise this to everyone. Let's want to feel ourselves in heart and soul. 
There is no corporeal distance that works on that. And then we will immediately feel that we are in a whole and complete connection in the spiritual realm. Yeah. To continue this question, we're really in the holiday of freedom, it's Passover Eve, and we learn that the freedom is revealed in our relationships. We want to write to the women that feel a hardship in their relationships at home. There is a feeling that the freedom is outside of that place where we are. There is a desire to run away. So what kind of freedom can we feel? We need to, first of all, agree that everything is done from above. Besides the connection between us, that we have to find the need for it, and to ask of the Creator to help us. But really, we're not lacking anything but to ask the Creator to connect us and to elevate us above the degree of this world. There is also the matter of the family, husband, wife. These things seem to us as really things that are really burdening us. We have to think a bit above this. Otherwise, we can't come out of our shell. So let's think a bit higher. Let's think a bit higher. It always helps not to be stuck in your dish, but to be a bit above it. I understand that it's hard for people that are living for 20, 30 years with the children and the grandchildren are in some other place and they can't see their grandchildren or they have old parents that are somewhere. I understand all of these things with this curfew and everything. It's true, on the one hand. On the other hand, let's, expect, let's accept this situation as something that heals us, that elevates us above all of this egoistic desire that's making us, how to say, that's making us cleaner. We have no choice. We have to go through this cleaning. Otherwise, we'll have to go through it in a much harder way that we have merited to do it in such a nice, soft way now. It's really the Creator's love for us, the measure to which He's really doing this. He's doing it to us out of love. Another topic, a bit more complicated, maybe, but uh, the European Union is falling apart. Chaim, please. Do we have time? I have time. If you can, I can. The lesson starts at one, so... I'll read a short intro, and then a few questions. Probably Norma will add to about what's happening in Europe. We already talked about the that the European Union is not helping. Italy, for example, with the coronavirus, but it's not only about, you know, not giving them 
what they need to deal with the virus, but it's also an economical matter. Uh, It's falling apart. Now the European Union is only a geographical place with a central bank. There is no common feeling of a European Union. This is the European Union's last chance. Either they're willing to show that they're willing to help the members of this, of the members of the European Union, that they're willing to help them, or that there is no point in having the European at all. Macron says that it's endangering that the coronavirus is, uh, that what's going on is endangering the European Union altogether. And there are many other quotes. It's something that's spreading now. Many people feel it. So there are several questions about this. First of all, uh, you've been talking about this for a long time, that the European Union is going to fall apart, that they were born in sin, that it was created for the wrong reasons. Do we really now see the end of the European Union? This I can't say. It all depends on the leaders that have built the European Union to their own benefit, and therefore it all depends on the measure to which it's good or not good for them. It's a business. The European Union is a big business, inner European business. No one besides the Europeans, besides these countries, besides, uh, let's say, Brussels, no one besides Brussels relates to it seriously, but only as to a business. The business of those people that created this union. So they have a central bank, they have a government, and court, and this and that, well, everything that's necessary. It was done only in order to profit, to succeed. That's it. And therefore, what's the question? If they'll be able to get something, some money out of it, they'll stay together. If they won't, they won't. So they'll have a meeting, in a European meeting, and decide that, okay, each goes his way. Because of the coronavirus, we can no longer stay together as the European Union. Who's to blame? Coronavirus, not us. And that's it. It's great, enough. They see that we stole from all of our nations. I don't know how much. Trillions of trillions of dollars. Euros. You can't even say how much. It's amazing sums. And that's it. After this coronavirus, things are going to be tough. So, what, to manage a business that won't be beneficial in any way, that will just get criticism and blow, so let's leave it. Instead of Macron, there can come someone else, doesn't matter who. Not us. We will leave it in a good, nice, respectable way, thank God. We have how to continue with our life, and others can come, do what they want. I think that after the corona, we will more or less see it's falling apart. They can't keep together, it's clear to us. That this business, if it doesn't bring in billions, then what is it for? The taking apart of the Eurozone and each country going back to its currency seems as something complicated. He talked about it in the past, too, that we can see how hard for it is for Britain to do the Brexit. So take apart the European Union is a true catastrophe. So how do we go through this process where many countries at the same time 
are um, on the verge of back- bankruptcy because of the corona. So how do we reach a state without reaching a multi-country bankruptcy? Something that can also cause a financial collapse all around the world. The 2008 con- uh, crisis will be nothing compared to this. When you're about to get married, you write a ketubah in Jewish tradition, and there it says what everyone owes, what each owes the other. Usually, the man, he is obligated to the woman. I think that by signing different agreements, they also have these kinds of they have also um, what kind of conditions do we have to meet in order to fall apart and so on and if they don't then this is what they'll have to deal with there are ways to arrange these things that the English were able to do it and also paid pretty much for it then they made these kinds of agreements between them. I'm not worried about that. It's their concern, not mine, but for sure that there are ways of how to do it. Even if they have, even if they have um, a way to do it, this kind of move will have a worldwide impact. So what? It'll influence the world in a way that all the industry, all the businesses will decrease in activity and everything. The world is in a free fall, any way you put it. It will continue what the corona is doing. Yeah, but only in a different way. The world has to fall into a kind of slumber in relation to all of these imaginary engagements and businesses. As a result of the collapse and the change that we see in the world, what kind of a world economically wise do you see growing? from all of this mess, an ideal kibbutz. What is that? We have to learn. Balasulam writes about it, an ideal kibbutz. That everyone's around the planet in an equal lifestyle, level of living, standard of living, connecting with one another. And this is how it's going to be. To make a standard of living that more or less there will be no poor, that everyone will be more or less healthy, it's something that we can do if we restrict ourselves in all of our outbursts of our ego. When we sent you the mail about Spain's intention to put together a basic income for everyone, you asked, where will they have the money to get it from? Where will the world have the money to do it from? They should think about Spain, about one country. It's more of a problem, but if the entire world is going to arrange its business this way that each and every family has some kind of a basic income that allows them to live their life and on the one hand and on the other hand that everyone has to work so and so many hours doing such and such actions that are necessary for humanity to live, then it's possible to do, no problem, especially that it has to be accompanied by an educational process. 
Do you see in this global crisis that's happening with the corona, with the economy, some kind of end to national states? I'm sure that there will be no countries. I'm really expecting this. There will be no countries, no nations, but that everyone will be as one man and one heart. That there will be no limitations in terms of nationality, color, race, nothing. Equality in all directions. About mutual responsibility in regard to the European Union or the lack of union in Europe. First of all, if the strongest countries uh, uh, were the stronger, stronger countries supposed to take care of the weaker countries, Italy, Italy, Spain are waiting for the corona bonds, meaning to take the national debt of all of these countries that went through a stronger blow, and for all of Europe to pay for it. Is this the right way to be about it, to go about it? Maybe to some extent, but not that it's possible to take it from the general plan of uh, the union of banks and industry and everything. If we're headed toward a European Union, then of course these debts we will have all of us to cover too. But uh, it's not happening right now. If it's not happening, then they won't succeed. They won't. How come? Out of 30 countries, the 30 countries have to pay for three countries. What does Czechia, the Czech Republic, Baltia, Northern Europe, why should they pay for the Italian, the Spanish, the French? They're so opposed to one another. Opposed. They won't want to pay for sure. They also disregard the South, as always it is in the world, that the North, they're a bit more elitistic, and then the South is more, how to say. You said that the virus is coming to teach us, educate us. So according to what you're saying, it's not going to be education in relation to Europe. This, this depends on the intensity of the dissemination that you and our writers that you'll do it and that we'll be able to change something. From above, we will receive help. When we will disseminate, we will see that the Creator is also accordingly arranging his blows, his preparations for the European clean. Let's start working on this seriously. Ideally speaking, Germany, the strongest nation in Europe, should have helped everyone. Ideally, that's how it was supposed to happen. A stronger economy has to take care of others. Germany is... Germany sucked, took from the entire European Union, I think, more than everyone else. And to turn to them and say, pay now or something, it's impossible. And again, they put together a union as if a union of money, but it didn't bring people closer in any way. And this is actually the crisis that they will have to deal with. I 
I don't see a good end to all these things. No one will want to help the others, especially that the situation now is so unknown. Yeah. Mushi has a question. I'm asking, why not tell people that eventually all of mankind has to reveal the upper force? We can use different words to explain it. We have to see what does a person expect, what can a person better accept, but what? You think that living in a kibbutz is more appealing to people, or I don't know, it seems to me the descriptions that we're giving, they're not attracting people. It's not clear what to attract them to. Look, we can talk that way too. I'm not against it, and of course it's correct. But I don't think that by that you will get from them more support, gratitude, because this is already related to beliefs and religions and what kind of upper force do you want to reveal to them? What are you pulling them to? What kind of mysticism are you introducing into Europe here? It's a problem. Many people understand that the upper force is the upper force of nature. It's possible to explain this, but to say that we're going to be in a kibbutz, that we're not going to fly, we're not going to drink coffee, we're not going to go to the barber. No, this is what I'm telling you, that this is the direction in which we will see changes. I'm now talking to the writers, to people that have to have a bit more mind and heart than the ordinary person on the street. I'm just giving a direction that the corona will clean this excessive desire or the desire for a surplus after which, after everyone was running after each other like monkeys, everyone doing the same, and that TV stars dictated the way that we'll live, the haircut that we'll have, I think that these things will calm down. This is what I was talking about, that's it. Not that a woman will not want to be pretty, natural things it even says about this in the Torah look how much it says about it but this is not this isn't what will be the goal for which people will live exist just to have a nice haircut and a nicer dress it's going to be like it's all of these things will decrease in importance. We have to elevate the human part in a person in importance, that there is the matter of attaining the purpose of everything. Where does the karuna come from and what for? And so on. So this is what we have to write about to explain that, I don't know, that it's the upper force or something else, the human part in a person, what is it? And as a result, later he won't want to fly a thousand times someplace, or maybe he will, but with the right intention. Mushi, you are right. You're right. Of course, I can't say anything against that. Rav, can we continue or would you like to end? Because we ended the time of the meeting. You'll pay for it later, don't worry. Norma. Uh, are there changes? There are changes in the way that the European countries 
are behaving and there's an um, uh, for example Denmark is really angry at Sweden that they didn't close anything in Austria they're starting to reopen businesses there are disputes between countries about how to deal with things many countries say why is there no empathy why are people behaving differently in different places because it affects everyone so the question is should all countries do the same and this called mutual responsibility or does every country can every country behave differently According to what we learn, according to what we're learning, we have to behave as one man and one heart in this global integral system, like a sphere that we all exist that we all exist in. So there can't be any change in opinion that everyone does what they feel like. But everyone reaches one decision, like in a group, like in a ten, that everyone has to be together. Therefore, Uh, business like in Europe or world business, they have to behave according to the same pattern, template as a 10. So whether it's one country, several countries, a few continents, everything has to behave like in a 10. Explain to them, to everyone, even in several articles, what does it mean? laws that exist in an integral system that we can't run from this and the coronavirus only brings us back to seeing that this is the kind of system that we live in last question it is Passover Eve, it's a very special evening, everyone's celebrating with their family, and we would like to ask if you can, uh, for all of our friends that are sitting at home with their families, the friends said that they would like to Uh, say something on part of the wisdom of Kabbalah about the situation. What would you tell the people of Israel, the families that are sitting at home now? Dear friends, we're all members of Bnei Baruch, the people that want to reveal the upper governance, the way the upper force is working on us. I'm really happy that we have reached this state. It's really the eve of the exodus from Egypt, that everyone is sitting in their own family, preparing themselves to come out of Egypt, of the egoistic desire. And really, it's still ahead. It's up ahead. The Creator is arranging the forces, the states, and I'd say that we're probably ready for this. Let's come together even more strongly and understand that we are in a process called the thought of creation, that this entire plan is something that we're really going through, bringing us closer to the realization. Let's go together. Our entire work is only in being together. We don't exactly know what and how 
But the entire process in now in Passover, this is something that we will learn what it says about it in the Exodus from Egypt. What does it mean to go through these states? We are really on the verge of the exodus to an enlightened world that we will not live out of each wanting to be better than the other, superior to the other, feeling this short, ignoble life, and that's it. But we want to go out into a world which is utterly good, a world without limitations. It is all up ahead. Let's come together more strongly, discover everything that we have learned and what we yet have to reveal, and so that we'll have a good, kosher, happy Passover, so that all of us as one man in one heart will come out of slavery in our own ego, this narrow, stinky ego of ours that will really see how it's closing all of us into an enlightened, free world. I wish this to everyone and that all of us will make this exodus and show the entire world, all of humanity, a way to join us and to follow us. Have a good and happy and kosher holiday and that we will feel that we are already exiting this world into the upper world. All the best. Thank you very much, Dr. Leitman. Happy holiday. Thank you to all the friends. See you on our next meeting.